recording now. All right, well, great. Uh, thank you so much, Katie, for organizing this. And, and thank you all of you for being here. Uh, I know it seems like on the one hand, we all have more time on our hands than ever, but there's also like more demands on that time. Uh, at least that's the way I've been feeling lately. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad that you're taking time out of, of your day, your lunch time, to learn a little bit about the gig economy. Um, so as Katie said, uh, my name is Jenna Spinelli. Um, I do work in the McCourtney Institute for Democracy in Liberal Arts. Uh, I'm also an instructor in the Belisario College of Communications. Um, my background is in journalism, but I've done all types of, of writing uh, and now uh, more recently podcasting and, and multimedia work throughout my career. Um, I have been working in the gig economy since 2016. And now this semester, I am teaching a seminar all about freelancing in the gig economy, uh, where I show students how to create profiles on a site called Upwork, which I'll be demoing here in just a minute, and actually walk them through the process of finding and, and applying for gigs. Um, I am planning to teach the course again in the fall. It's COM 297 if you want to take a look at it and add it to your fall schedule. Uh, and then that's where you can find me uh, online. And I'll share my contact information again at the end as well. So I just thought it would be good to, to set the table with, a def with some definitions. Um, the gig economy is thrown around a lot uh, and it can mean a lot of different things. And there's like several tiers of the gig economy. Um, but at the, the most basic level, it is a system of employment in which workers are independent contractors rather than traditional employees. So I think you're all probably familiar with the idea of you go to work for a company or a nonprofit or an educational institution, whatever it is, um, you know, you are a full-time employee on their payroll. They give you a salary and benefits, and that's like been the traditional employment path for a long time. But over the past, I don't know, 10 or 12 years or so, really since the advent of the iPhone, there's been this other system that has sprung up um, where people are increasingly working for themselves. Now, there have been freelancers for, for a long time, people that worked as independent contractors, but um, the gig economy is really when people are taking those gigs and you know, using them to, to replicate or in some cases exceed what they would get from a traditional full-time system of employment. And uh, the, the barriers to entry are, are much, much lower than they've ever been. You know, a, a generation ago, if someone went to freelance, they would have to have a specific skill set. They would have to send out letters of inquiry to potential employers or clients, or they would have to go through some type of agency. There would just be some type of, of gatekeeper that they would have to go through in order to obtain freelance employment. Um, the gig economy and, and a lot of the, the platforms that we have today have really just taken away those, those gatekeepers completely, um, which can be good and bad. And I, I don't, um, and I, as I say in my class, you know, the, the gig economy is not all like sunshine and rainbows. There's definitely um, a lot of pros and cons that, that come with working for yourself as an independent contractor without that safety net of health insurance, for example, or without the rights to organize collectively in, in labor unions and those sorts of things. Um, I'm happy to, to share some resources at the end um, if people are interested in, in reading more about some of those pros and cons. Um, but I, I really focus on how you can all use the skill sets that you're developing in your liberal arts education to really thrive on these platforms and, and make the most of them um, make them work for you rather than you kind of being subject to whatever their their demands are. Um, so the, the gig economy, if you think about it on an app level, it can be anything from Grubhub or Uber or Uber Eats um, on kind of one end of the spectrum. Uh, in the middle are things like TaskRabbit, which um, you People can contract out people to do various tasks, whether that's fixing something up around the house or running errands. Uh, Instant Cart, I would put in this, um, this category as well. 
and these these apps, uh, you know, given uh, everything that's happening right now with COVID-19, they've really experienced a, a boom in, in popularity. But where I have my experience and focus my teaching is on more professional based gig apps. Um, so I, as I said, I cover a site called Upwork in my class. Um, there's one called Fiverr that operates similarly, but these are um, professional to professional networks. So companies and, and sometimes entrepreneurs or startups are looking for help with marketing or accounting or multimedia or IT or some type of professional or creative service. And I think that that type of marketplace is the best fit for students, uh, whether they are in, in communications or IST or liberal arts or, or business, um, there's, there's any number of, of gigs, which we'll go through here. Uh, and then this is all technology based. All of these these platforms exist in app form, they exist on, on websites. So that is like a one-stop shop. You have all of your, you find your gigs there, you apply for your gigs there, you manage the work um, and you manage client communication, you get your payment through those sites. So they really are um, you know, all in one solutions, uh, which is another unique facet of the gig economy as opposed to more traditional freelancing in traditional freelancing, um, the freelancer would typically generate an invoice and send it to the clients um, on the gig economy that is, again, all handled through the app. Uh, so uh, according to the most recent statistics I was able to find, which is from the end of 2018, there are 55 million gig workers in the US. Apologies for my typo there on the letter I. Um, and the that I, I would expect is going to continue to increase, particularly uh, if you've been following the news about unemployment in, in the US. Um, I, I don't foresee a, a landscape in which companies are really going to be largely adding full-time workers to their payroll. So I think more and more of them are going to be turning to gig economy platforms to fill specific uh, needs that they have, specific tasks they need to accomplish, specific projects they need help with. Um, so now is a great time to be diving in and, and learning some of these skills. Um, there are about 3 million jobs posted on Upwork every year, and that has continued to increase steadily. So um, I think that also speaks to the demand out there for people uh, looking for these gigs. So as you'll see, it's, it's pretty easy to, to go down the rabbit hole and, and just the this kind of decision paralysis in, in, in some respects or, or choice fatigue just with all the, the options that are out there. And then, um, you know, you don't, I, I've been thus far talking about the gig economy as a source of full-time employment, but um, it is also very much possible and, and I would say um, perhaps encouraged to think about the concept of a side hustle. So that's how I got my start. You know, I've, I've worked full time for Penn State for um, pretty much my entire career, but I've also had these other interests that I've been able to pursue on the side. Uh, and I would certainly encourage all of you, even if you do end up in full time employment to consider some other type of, of income on the side, income source on the side, you know, uh, much like we saw after the 2008 recession, I think that the employment situation is going to become ever more precarious in the coming months, years, as we adjust to the new coronavirus reality. So I think, you know, whatever you can do to, to leverage your skills in a creative way and, and solidify your source of income is, is only going to help you. Um, you know, I know some people have side hustles to help pay for vacations or shopping or help pay off their student loans more quickly or, you know, um, it is more work that you're doing for sure. But um, if you find the right gig and are judicious about the type of work you're choosing to pursue, it shouldn't feel too much like work. Um, at least that's, that's been my experience. That's what I'm working with with my students to do. Um, even if this summer you're planning to do an unpaid internship, for example, rather than, you know, going to work at Starbucks or wait tables or something part time, this is a great opportunity to, um, again, broaden your professional skills and your portfolio uh, while you're still uh, earning some extra income on the side. 
so uh, again, you need to understand um, how you can make the gig economy work for you, how you can find gigs that will not just put money in your pocket, but also bolster your resume, your portfolio, and maybe even help you see things in, in a different way. Um, I found that, that my experience uh, on Upwork um, has allowed me to see different ways that, that other industries, other sectors operate, um, which helps me bring ideas back to my job here at Penn State. I think that um, you know, when you work in a, a large organization, it can be really easy to get stuck in how, you know, things have been done for a while, old patterns, old ways of doing things. So sometimes you just need to work around a different set of people, different circumstances to help spur some of that innovation and creativity. Um, so as I said, I, I do uh, most of my experience on, on a platform called Upwork. That is what I'm, I'm teaching uh, in my, my seminar. Um, I would encourage all of you to create an account. I'm going to uh, walk you through um, what, what a profile looks like, but it's free to sign up. Um, you basically just upload some information um, that is similar to your, your resume or your LinkedIn profile, um, and you uh, can then bid on gigs from there. There is a a paid tier that, that you can go to if you want to apply for, for more gigs, but there is a, a baseline um, like five or six a month, I think that you can apply to completely for free. As I said, uh, Upwork handles all of your payments. Um, and so it's, it's all kind of uh, handled there right, right in, in one place. Um, so I'm going to uh, actually jump out for, for a second here and uh, show you my Upwork profile. But um, while I do that, uh, I need to just go on mute for one second. So I'm going to mute my audio and stop my video just for 30 seconds. Uh, I will be right back to you just a second. Okay, everybody. Thanks for your patience there. Um, so let's uh, let's jump out to Upwork. Um, before we do that, Katie, any questions coming in so far? Not yet. And I just okay. sent out a reminder that anybody's welcome to share them in the chat. Okay, great. Um, so um, Upwork is a big marketplace for any type of gig uh, you can imagine. So I mostly do writing. Uh, so my, my feed is set up to show me uh, writing gigs. Um, I do a lot of marketing and articles and, and journalism. So you can see here there's one gig that was posted 12 minutes ago, one that was posted 17 minutes ago, one that was posted 22 minutes ago. So this is like an, a constantly yeah. ongoing feed. Mm -hmm. I think we're still on the PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. Okay, how about now? Do you see Upwork? Yep, looks good. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, so as I was saying, uh, this is a pretty much nonstop loop of gigs that, that are, are posted here. Um, every couple minutes, uh, there's, there's something new that's up here. So when I first started, um, I was like really gung-ho and like, you know, bit on a bunch of stuff and quickly found myself in a, in a position where um, I had taken on more than I could realistically handle. So that's important to, to keep in mind, like how much, you know, you're not going to get every gig that, that you, you apply for, but um, you should, you know, have some idea of, of how many hours you can devote to these things, what the client's looking for, kind of what, what that balance is. Uh, so let's say, um, you know, I wanted to apply for this 
fun product description for nerdy soy candles. Um, I can see that uh, they're, as I said, they're looking for, for product descriptions. They, they give a good example here. Um, they're looking, this is a fixed price gig of, of $200. Um, you can see a little bit about how the client is, has been rated in the past. Um, that's another kind of hallmark of gig economy platforms is that um, it is all rating based. So if you think about, you know, every time you take an Uber, you rate some, you, you rate your experience when you stay in an Airbnb, um, all of these things. So, you know, being able to set expectations and, and deliver upon them is super important. And I'll, I'll come back to that here um, in just a minute. But um, you can see um, a little bit about other, other, um, other projects, other clients, other, other freelancers this client has worked with. Um, so this is all really important to see, you know, if you start to see people that have, you know, one star reviews and things like that, that's, that's a red flag to you. Um, similarly, there's lots of scammers out there, you know, people that ask you to write, you know, 10,000 words for a dollar or something like that. Um, so it's, you know, you should know what, what your time is worth. Um, for the, the students in my class, I, I typically uh, advise them to set their starting rates around $15 an hour. Um, you know, maybe more if they, if they have um, some, some experience, they've already been doing their own business, that type of thing. Um, but, you know, you can very clearly see what the client's uh, price range is, what they're looking for. Um, and then if you would want to go ahead and apply, you would hit the submit a proposal button um, and you can write up a little cover letter um, and, and attach samples of your work and then go from there. Um, you always have the, the last word over you know, whether or not you accept a, a gig so the client makes you an offer. If they would like to work with you, then it's your choice whether or not you want to accept it. And I tell my students that don't ever hit that accept button until you are exactly certain of what the client wants and that you can deliver it. If there's any miscommunication along the way there, you're setting yourself up for a bad review. Um, so it's really important to have clear communication with the client and also in some respects to under promise and over deliver. Like don't tell someone you can have something ready in two days if you know it's gonna take you a week. It's better to do something the opposite way. Tell them you'll have it in a week and then, you know, exceed their expectations when you have it to them in three days or something like that. Um, there are all kinds of, of gigs on here. So if you want to work in social media, for example, um, I, I know a, a lot of my students this semester want to work with influencers and things like that. Um, you can really drill down into if you want to look at social media content, if you want to look at digital marketing, um, social media analytics, all of those kind of things. Um, if you want to do like video work, you can search for video production. Um, I know one of my students this semester is doing voiceover work. That's, that's the gig that they want to do. Um, so again, there's, you can even search by specific programs um, and, and see, you know, different gigs that, that pop up. So, uh, and this is always changing too. So um, again, there's no shortage of things to, to go down the rabbit hole on. Um, just to uh, jump out and, and look at um, what, a, what a profile looks like. So you can see, um, my profile here, this is very similar, um, again, to, to language that I have on my LinkedIn account. Um, and then once you start doing work, it shows your, your client history. Um, you can add work samples. So that's one of the things that um, my students are doing this semester is creating samples for this portfolio. So if you have experience from internships or from um, you know, other, other work that you've done in student media or, or things like that. Um, I don't know that I would put like class papers up here, maybe something that's more professionally oriented. Um, but even if you haven't done anything yet, you can always create something. So 
pick your favorite brand and create some social media content for them as if you are working there or write a blog post or an email campaign or, or something that aligns with the gig that you want to do or start your own blog or your own YouTube channel or something that you can put out there to show that you have the skills that you want to share with these clients that you're going to, to be applying to work for. Um, and then there is also, uh, as I said, um, messaging uh, functionality within here. So all of your client communication is, is managed through Upwork as well. Uh, and you also manage your payment through here. So I know I just went through that quickly. If there are any, any questions, I'm happy to answer them or, or go back to uh, any specific part of the, the profile. Um, you can also just search for other freelancers. This is what we're doing right now in class. So just searching to see, you know, what other people charge, what, um, what, what their, their profiles look like. So just to, to get a sense, um, I was actually just doing this this morning to find some examples. Um, so, you know, you can just see like based on how much um, experience people have, what they're charging, how their profiles are set up, you can get a sense of what's out there. So you can think about like how you might fit into that based on, on your skills. Um, I think as you guys are thinking about these, these profiles, um, you should um, you know, definitely mention that you're early in your career. Don't try to be someone that you're not. Um, don't try to give the impression that you have 10 years of experience when you really don't. Um, I, I have seen college students profiles on here that says, um, you know, I am a student, I have, you know, I'm looking to gain experience, I'm an early career professional. So it's important to be honest and truthful about who you are and, and what skills you bring to the table. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna jump back to the, the PowerPoint here just to, to reiterate a couple of those things and then we can uh, go into to Q&A. Um, so again, uh, you should have some work samples on your profile to demonstrate uh, your, your skills that you hope to bring to your clients and don't be afraid to make some uh, if you don't have any um, or even, you know, um, reach out to the, the Career Enrichment Network or other, other resources on campus to, to get some ideas for how you can best present your skills. Um, Upwork also asks you uh, about your experience level, um, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Most of you, I'm going to guess, will be at the beginner level. Um, you know, this is essentially the, the equivalent of working a part-time job. Um, so if we think about a $15 hour, dollar an hour minimum wage, um, that's a good baseline to start with. Uh, after a year or two, I would say you can move up to intermediate, um, which is maybe 20 or 25 an hour. And then once you've been, uh, have you know maybe closer to four or five years of experience, you can go up to advanced, which is 30 an hour and up. Um, there's really no ceiling um, base. I've seen rates on Upwork as high as two or $300 an hour, depending on the field. You know, some fields pay more than others. And um, I think that that search I was showing you going through to, to look for um, different freelancers is, is helpful too. So we can see here, you know, for social media, the rates um, are typically in the 15 to 30 an hour range. If I search for uh, video production, I suspect that we're going to see higher rates um, because these are more advanced skills. So yeah, here's someone for $99 an hour, $65 an hour, $55. Um, so there's, you know, there's, there's a range of options there. If I search for IT and networking or engineering, um, you can see we're up at $80 an hour, $100 an hour. So um, it's important to, to make sure that you're setting your rates competitively um, with whatever industry that, that you want to, to work in. And then just to, to kind of wrap this all up, um, you know, while you want your rates to be competitive, you don't want to be the bargain basement either. You don't want to be like the lowest 
bidder out there. Um, you don't want to do work for less than, than what your time is actually worth to you. So some of this is just trial and error. You'll, you'll get better at it um, the, the more you do it in terms of knowing how long it takes you to complete a, a, um, a particular uh, type of, of assignment or type of gig and you can, you can adjust accordingly. Um, just like everywhere on the internet, um, there's people out there looking to scam you. Um, if it sounds too good to be true or you have like that weird feeling in your gut, you should probably listen to that. Um, as you've seen, there's no shortage of, of jobs out there that you can bid on so you don't have to like really worry about wrestling with, with a difficult client or with someone that you think might be kind of sketchy, like just move on to the next one, let them, let them behind. Um, again, under promise and over deliver, set clear expectations. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I think especially when you're starting out, whether it's in the gig economy or even in your first job, you just want to give the impression that you know what you're doing. Um, and so you're, you're maybe reticent to ask questions, but um, you know, as, as an employer, I think that they really value people that have that curiosity and people that really want to make sure that they understand what's expected of them. And in the end, it'll save you time and it'll save them time. You know, if you get an assignment that like you're not totally clear on, but you do it anyway, and it's not what the client wants that you're going to have to go back and redo it at, you know, basically your own expense. Um, and you know, they're going to have to take the time to give you feedback or review it or help you figure out where their expectations didn't, didn't align with what you turned in. So the clearer you can be upfront, the better, um, again, don't, don't, uh, overextend yourself or over commit to gigs. Make sure you know, you know, what, what you can realistically take on. And then, you know, as you go on, the more specialized, um, you can become, the more you can charge. Um, there is a, a podcast episode, um, which I can share out and, and put in the, the chat where, um, this, this woman named Laura Briggs, um, she became the top rated legal writer on Upwork. So law firms would hire her to write their blogs and their website copy and, and all of those sorts of things. And that's a very specific skill set that she developed and she was able to charge more for it. She was in demand she knew or developed an understanding of the legal fields. And not only did she know how to write, but she knew all of this legal information that the, the law firm would have had to spend time bringing someone else up to speed on, but they were more than happy to pay her a higher rate for that expertise that she brought. So um, one advantage I think that all of you can bring is that you're all part of Gen Z. Um, so you can position yourself that way. Companies are ever trying to figure out how to crack that demographic, um, how to connect with people in college or teenagers. And so you might be able to bring a, a unique skill set to the table in that regard. Uh, so I, I did, um, again, go through Upwork. I, I would encourage you to, um, to consider creating a profile. Uh, and if there's anything I can do to help you out, if you want to send me your profile to look at, um, you can definitely do that. I'm happy to, to give you feedback. Um, or if you do end up applying for gigs or want help searching for them, um, I'm happy to, to help there as well. But I think we have about 15 minutes or so left. If anybody has questions or if there's anything you want me to go over again on Upwork, I'm happy to jump back out to the site or any type of gigs you specifically want to look for, um, we can just type it in and, and see what comes up. While everybody's thinking, Jenna, thank you so much for the presentation as well as the offer for students to follow up afterwards. I'm sure um, you spin your tires a bit in the beginning to get those reviews and mm -hmm. figure out what's best for you. Um, is there an expectation, do you think, to focus on in the beginning of, you know, having a lower hourly rate or having a, a broader focus in the beginning just to get a profile built up? Or do you think it makes more sense to be more focused from the start? Um, I mean, I think if you come into it with a particular 
skill set or particular focus, you can start more specialized. But um, beyond that, yeah, I think you need to not take anything you can get, but definitely be more open to what you take on or not just to like, I think your, your notion of kicking the tires is, is a good one. Um, just to look for, you know, easy wins, um, easy ways that you can get those five stars to start out uh, and then have that solid base to work from. Um, you know, just like your GPA, your freshman year really matters for the rest of your college career. Your first couple gigs on Upwork really matter a lot. Um, if you start off with a bad review, it's, it's hard to come back from that. So, uh, you know, being able to, you know, choose those first gigs wisely and look for things that, okay, look, I know I'm going to be able to knock this out of the park or you're realistically confident you're going to be able to, to meet the client's expectations. Um, you know, definitely look for those first gigs with that, that focus in mind. Great. Looks like one question just came in from Julen. Hello, Jenna. I would like to get into voiceover work, but I have never had a job in voice work. What do you suggest? What sample work could I do myself to upload? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would, um, think about like what what type of gig you would want to maybe do like a practice voiceover, um, whether it's like, I don't know, a chapter from a book that you would put into an audio book or maybe, um, I don't know, take your favorite commercial and, and do a voiceover for that. Or um, this is not my, my area of, of expertise. I'm just kind of spitballing here about what, what your examples might be, but just, you know, take, whatever whatever you think is like your ideal voiceover gig and and try to recreate that based on something that's already out there um i guess would be my my advice let me come over here and look for a voiceover and see uh what we have um Let's see what type of voiceover gigs uh, people are searching for. Um, YouTube, um, you know, uh, maybe take a, an animation that you like and, and do a voiceover there. Um, this is interesting, meditation recording. I could see that. Uh, I know in the, the podcast world, they're often looking for people to do intros or credits for a podcast. So if you have a favorite podcast, maybe record uh, an intro or like a, a welcome there. Um, yeah, I, I guess if you have other specific questions, um, Jewel, and you can, you can feel free to, to send me an email and I can try to work with you uh, more specifically one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Yolan. Any other questions? please feel free to put them in the chat. Yeah, I imagine mean, there's a lot of jobs out there, Jenna, that we wouldn't ever think of that are available in. Oh yeah, part. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, um, yeah, you can literally just type in anything. I mean, Katie, can you think of anything that you think might be be applicable or or a type of gig that that the the students you work with would be particularly interested in or, or something you hear about a lot you mentioned earlier the idea of being an influencer mm -hmm. and working. I, I i didn't realize how much that's becoming a career um so that would be something yeah yeah marketing and influencer manager social media manager um you know we're in the midst of the, in addition to the, the gig economy, we're also in the attention economy. So all these companies, organizations are fighting for attention, right? We all have the infinite scroll on our phones and on our computers. So um, they're all looking for ways to break through that noise and get their message across, whether that's on social media or in, in more traditional media or through advertising or public relations. So I think that's something that like cuts across a lot of, of different fields and it applies to written content, it applies to uh, graphic design, it applies to video. Um, every company is basically a media company now. 
because we all have to put all these things out there to be able to get attention, whether it's to, you know, get people to come to your college or buy your products or sign up for your course or, or any number of things. That makes sense. We feel that as a career office. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually just got another question in there and this is a great one for the college. Um, is there a market for translation? Mm, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and I actually meant to, to put that in my um, presentation. I was certainly thinking about it as I was preparing this. So when you set up your profile, it asks you what languages you speak. So you can put in there. Um, but yeah, uh, English, Spanish, um, English, Chinese. Um, yeah, looks like looks like lots of opportunities for a translation for sure. I think we're hearing um, more and more that this is a, a great way to break into the business and that this might mm -hmm. be the type of work that's initially available in translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, and even, um, you know, I even see some things here, proofreading or editing or transcription services. Those are also big as well. I got another thank you, Jenna. Oh. <laughs> Any other questions today? As we mentioned, we are recording, so you can always fall back on um, the presentation if you um, wanted to double check something or again, reach out to Jenna directly, there's our contact information again, or to the Career Enrichment Network. Um, our email is lanetwork at psu.edu. Oh, and I said I was going to um, talk about, uh, or, or put in the chat, um, some some recommendations. Um, I'll just I'll just say them here, and, and um, Katie, maybe I can send them to you. Uh, after the fact, um, there there are are two books I would uh, recommend if, if folks want to just learn more about the gig economy in general. Um, there's one that's called Gigged, um, G I G G E D, uh, and one called Hustle and Gig. These are both sort of they come out of the the sociology or um, in some cases anthrop cultural anthropology discipline, um, but they they are interviews with people that work in the gig economy at various levels. So you can see the good, the bad, and the ugly of um, you know, what's, what's out there from horror stories to people that have become millionaires um, from, from this environment. So I think it's important, as I, as I said at the beginning, to go into it with a clear-eyed perspective and know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I could definitely send um, out those links too that you'll share. Um, there's one person on the call I've requested in the chat to share your name and contact information. Okay. I can't make it out from the name that's displayed. So um, beyond that, we can definitely share that. Okay, great. All right, well, I think that might be it for today then. Thank you all so much. If you're interested in other webinars from our office or within the college or the university, please continue to check out Nittany Lion Careers um, for those uh, virtual webinars or career chats that are being offered right now. Um, there's one coming up next week with recruiters to talk about the current um, process of finding a job and internship um, with everything going on. You can also schedule a virtual career coaching appointment with anyone in the Career Enrichment Network. You would do that through your Nittany Lion Careers account and select any um, of our coaches with liberal arts after their name. Um, and we are still doing walk-ins on Wednesdays. Um, and there is a link going out with that um, event that you can find through Nittany Lion Careers or through the Liberal Arts Newswire. All right, well, Jenna, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right, have a great day. You too.